like to welcome each one to our service this morning. And shall we bow for a word of prayer? And our gracious Heavenly Father, just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here once again to worship you in the place of our choice. And Father, we just ask, Lord, you just quiet each one of our hearts before thee that we might be willing to listen to that still small voice as you speak to each one of our hearts individually this morning. Now, Father, we just pray for those that couldn't make it today because because of sickness or think of those in the nursing homes, Father, just couldn't make it. We just pray, Lord, you'll make your presence known to them in a real special way as only thou can at this moment. We just pray, Lord, now that all that is said and done in the service today be done to glorify thee and not man. And all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's all stand and take that hymn book. Turn over to hymn number 171. Let's stand. 171. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is. You have joy this morning? Yeah. We should. We should. Turn over to hymn number 215. Two fifteen is Tell Me the Story of Jesus.
Amen. You may be seated. Our Bible verse for the month of December is taken from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Shall we read it together? But thy death and death, thou shalt be healed among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall it come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from home, from everlasting, and from high spirit. That should be the verse we're working on for the month of December. Right, the new daily breads are on the back table. Please feel free to take one on your way out. Um, Monday at 6.30 be the hand co handbell choir rehearsal. Wednesday at 6.45, Patch the Pirate Children's Club for grades one through six. Be held downstairs in Fellowship Hall. See Nate Speroni for details. All right, this coming Saturday, Christmas party, potluck dinner, Saturday, December 9th at 5.30. There's a sign-up sheet on the back table, and please sign up today. And make note, all are welcome to attend. All right, birthdays. And we have a birthday today, the last few days, the next few days, besides Sandra Nato, Linda Goulet, Kirsty Speroni, all right. <laughs> All right, let's sing happy birthday then, these folk at this time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Anniversary. What have an anniversary today, the last few days, the next few days? All right, I'm going to ask the ushers then to come forward at this time to wait upon us for our tithes and our offerings. <laughs> Shall we stand, please? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. And Kirstie Speroni has some special music for us at this time.
Certainly keep the Speroni family in prayer with a heavy burden. Uh, children can go down to Sunday school. It's time. Ah, to be young again, huh? Go to Sunday school. 
Let's all stand, sing a couple of choruses. This song is called Psalm 2, Kiss the Sun. It comes from Psalm 2. So let's sing it. is the one to me. Jesus. Let's sing. More precious than silver. But at this time, Pastor Mike Rizzuti is going to come right up here. Take your time. He has a message for us. Good morning. Good to see everyone. what the church looks beautiful amen with the uh all the flowers and uh christmas is a, a special time amen i uh i know it's a, a little uh different this year of course for the uh, speronis with uh their first uh holidays without pastor i'm sure that's uh horrible and, and, uh, just pray, amen, that God will give them grace and time will uh, help them uh, move along, amen. I couldn't help but think when Kirsty was singing that song, I don't know if any of you remember um, Leonard Cohen's uh, song, Hallelujah, and uh, the one stanza that talks about uh, offering up a broken hallelujah, you know, when you've just been uh, 
going through a, 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 a bad time, a rough time, and uh, you still want to praise God, amen, and uh, that's what that reminded me of. But you can uh, open your Bibles this morning, New Testament, uh, Philemon. Philemon is uh, just a little one page uh, just before uh, Hebrews. It's on page 270 in my Bible, amen. I don't know where it is in yours. <laughs> but uh, Philemon. But again, this is a good time uh, of the year to, uh, uh, people are more receptive to the gospel, I, I think, because uh, uh, even the lost uh, associate Jesus with Christmas. Uh, uh, they, they all are aware of the birth of Christ, the baby Jesus, and, uh, you know, whether you want to have the debates, he was born in September or not, or October. Uh, the point is the world thinks it was December 25th, and for the sake of uh, uh, being able to use that uh, as an opportunity to witness, people are a little more receptive uh, sometimes. Sometimes family members are a little more uh, receptive. We had a deacon at our church, and his uh, wife, uh, every whatever the holiday was, if it was her birthday, she had grown-up kids, and she would... Uh, uh, they would ask her, uh, Mom, what do you want for uh, your birthday? And she would say, for you to sit next to me in church. And, that, and that's what they would do. And, and, and some of them would, she had three or four kids, uh, grown kids. And uh, uh, Mother's Day, what do you want for Mother's Day? For you to sit with me in church or Christmas. Come sit with me uh, in church. And uh, many times they did. And we we seen two or three of her. Uh, adult children get saved over the years, amen, and so uh, Christmas can be a, 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 a time where people are a little more receptive, we can use the uh, opportunity to uh, uh, invite others, I mean, look at how, how beautiful our church is, amen, with the uh, decorations and all that, and uh, I don't think anybody would be uh, disappointed to see uh, that. So, if you got your uh, Bible open to uh, the epistle uh, of Paul to Philemon, now this is just, uh, again, it's just one short uh, uh, epistle, it's uh, 25 verses. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote this uh, from Rome when he was uh, in prison. I don't really have so much of an outline uh, or anything uh, with this uh, uh, sermon, but we'll, we're going to read the, the verses and we'll expound on it. And, and for a little book, I think everyone will agree there's a lot of uh, good stuff uh, in this book, amen, that, uh, that we can uh, apply to our lives. Uh, we should all be able to uh, take something uh, from uh, the book of Philemon uh, and, uh, and apply it uh, into our own lives, amen, to make us uh, better uh, Christians or thankful. Uh, Christians, and if you uh, never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, you'll see the uh, forgiveness uh, that's uh, spoken of uh, here. So uh, we'll, we're going to end up reading the whole thing, but we won't read it right now. We'll read uh, verse 1 uh, to verse 7. The Apostle Paul, uh, that's the greeting, and Paul uh you know, extends to Philemon, just uh, uh, some of the niceties or whatever. He uh, mentions a lot of Philemon. Philemon uh, was an a excellent uh, Christian, excellent uh, uh, character and qualities, and Paul uh, is going to mention a bunch of them. But let's uh, read uh, in verse 1, the Bible says, uh, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, uh, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved uh, and fellow laborer. In verse 2 it says, And to our beloved Aphia uh, in Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. And so in verse number 2, uh, uh, Aphia is, is Philemon's wife, uh, and Archippus uh, is his son. Amen. And uh, uh, history, it's not in the Bible, but 
uh, history, church history, tells us that the three of them, uh, probably about five years after uh, Paul had wrote this letter, uh, were martyred uh, for the Lord. Amen. The husband, the wife, and their son were uh, whipped, uh, and then they were buried uh, up to their waist, and then they were stoned to death. Amen. Uh, what a horrible uh, thing uh, to happen. Amen. Uh, uh, Philemon, uh, we're going to see as we uh, read on, he had a church in his house. What is it? Oh, oh wait, amen. We're all set. All right. So anyway, so Paul's writing. Paul's in prison. He's writing. Uh, Paul, Timothy, they're in prison. Some of the other uh, guys, and he's writing to uh, Philemon here. Uh, mentions his wife. Mentions his son. Refers to uh, his son as a fellow soldier. Uh, refers to Philemon as a fellow uh, laborer. Amen. Uh, Philemon had a, a a church in his house. So. Oh, uh, just just from these couple of verses, we can see that Philemon was a good uh, Christian. Amen. He uh, has some uh, good qualities. In verse three, he says, uh, "Grace to you and peace from God our Father uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ." And Paul says in verse four, "I thank my God, uh, making mention of thee always." Uh, in my prayers, amen. Uh, and so Paul, again, he prayed for Philemon always. He thought of him always. Uh, he uh, obviously had a, a certain affection uh, for Philemon uh, in uh, Philemon's service uh, to the Lord. In verse 5, uh, Paul says, A hearing of thy love uh, and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus uh, and toward uh, all saints, verse 6, that the communication of thy faith uh, may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing uh, which is in you uh, in Christ Jesus. And so uh, Philemon, uh, again, we're going to see as we uh, go on, Philemon uh, uh, had servants, he had a big house, amen. Uh, he uh, communicated uh, to other saints and to the work of the Lord. Uh, so he uh, gave, amen. He was a, a, a big giver. And Paul's mentioning uh, all these things, amen, that uh, he was wealthy and he was generous uh, to uh, the work of God, amen. Uh, and so uh, that's uh, another one of the uh, great qualities that. Uh, Philemon had, amen, was uh, he was uh, uh, generous with uh, what God blessed uh, him with. In verse 7, Paul says, For we have great joy uh, and consolation uh, in thy love, uh, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed uh, by the brother. And so, uh, them seven verses there, the Apostle Paul, uh, his, his greeting and uh, just acknowledging uh, uh, some of Philemon's uh, uh, qualities that uh, he had, amen. It says in verse uh, 7 that uh, we have great joy uh, and consolation, amen. There was a, uh, they uh, were comforted uh, uh, in uh, Philemon's love, and it says, uh, because the bowels of the saints uh, are refreshed. The word bowels, that, that's like the... Uh, the uh, deep-seated emotions, the seed of uh, their emotions. So uh, Philemon had a big impact uh, on the uh, other uh, uh, saints uh, because of his generosity, because of the uh, type of Christian that he was, uh, amen, uh, the type of uh, Christian helping people. And I love where it says, uh, uh, because the bowels of the uh, saints are refreshed by thee, amen. Uh, what a thing for someone to say uh, that uh, that you're refreshing, amen, that uh, you're one of those Christians that's, that's refreshing, amen, that uh, word refreshing means to, uh, to invigorate or to energize. Uh, it makes me think of at Starbucks, they have these uh, drinks, it's called a, a refresher, and uh, uh, it has green tea in it, 
Amen. It's kind of, if you get a strawberry refresher, it's kind of uh, clear pink, and you see all, and just looking at it is refreshing. Amen. Like looking at it, you like, man, I can't wait to take a sip of that. And then the caffeine in it energizes you. Amen. And so uh, uh, Philemon was just one of those Christians that uh, re was refreshing. Amen. To uh, the saints. They enjoyed uh, seeing him. They enjoyed being around him. And man, and isn't that the type of Christian we should be? Amen. Uh, even to our co-workers, even to uh, uh, people in our family that aren't uh, Christians, if we could have a uh, an uplifted uh, attitude. I remember Peter Cartwright, uh, the uh, Methodist uh, backwoods preacher, uh, is what uh, he was called. He 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 wasn't a pastor. Um, he was uh, ordained by the Methodist uh, Church as an exhorter. Amen. And an exhorter. That's someone that encourages. Amen. That's someone that uplifts and he would travel on horseback it was in the 1800s to the different mining uh communities he would start little bible studies and then he would do his circuit and he'd go back and check and and in some places they uh maybe they started a little church and he would ride his circuit and he would check and he was an exhorter he was an encourager amen and that and and then for us as christians that's what we need to try to be amen uh to uh because I tell you what, if if you uh, you get me around like a mopey Christian and uh, uh, like Chicken Little, like the sky is falling and uh, negative, I mean that bumps me out. And I'm a Christian, and I have probably more grace. But you get somebody you work with or uh, lost uh, people that uh, in your family or people, and and they see what you got, and they're like, man, I can get more joy out of a can of beer than what these people have, amen, and uh, shouldn't be that way, amen, as uh, Christians, we should uh, try to uh, uh, be more like Philemon, amen, and be a, a someone that was refreshing, a refresher uh, to the saints, he uh, helped to uh, restore and to stimulate uh, people. I know be, being, uh, when I was younger, going to uh, uh, the streets, and I, and I went for years, that's where I met uh, Pastor Speroni. Most of you uh, know that, uh, uh, going to, uh, on the Boston Common and going to Harvard uh, Square and witnessing and passing out uh, tracks and uh, things like that. Uh, and, and, and at the time, you know, uh, you stimulate each other. Like the Bible says, iron shopping is iron. So you get somebody who's an uplifter, amen, and, uh, around someone else, and, and you uplift each other, and together you become stronger, amen, uh, like a husband and a wife. Or, or even I think of Philemon, his wife, and his son. I, I know I'm going to misquote it, but there's a proverb about the, the three cords, amen, that uh, uh, it's hard to break uh, a, a rope that's made of uh, three cords. and. Uh, uh, and so iron chopping is iron. Uh, you uplift one another. And, I, and I'm not saying that we don't have problems and we don't have real life situations. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we have health problems, whatever. Uh, amen. But we shouldn't uh, focus on them to the point of, of where it takes our joy and steals our joy and steals our motivation. Uh, for uh, God and uh, just uh, consumes our mind that the last thing we're even thinking about is if somebody's saved or not. And, and, we, and that's something that we should always uh, have on our mind, amen. Uh, whether uh, 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 somebody, uh, you got all your family coming, you know, and uh, uh, maybe you just want to uh, pray for the food. Maybe that's all you're going to get to do, amen. Uh, but uh, that can make an impact, you know, and things like that. But if uh, uh, all you can do is you can't wait to see him, so you complain can complain about everything that's wrong in your life, you know, uh, that's uh, not that good, amen. Uh, and so Philemon's a, a good example of someone who uh, loved the Lord, had many, many uh, great uh, qualities. He made a uh, impact on. Uh, uh, 
other Christians, a positive impact, amen. Uh, and the, uh, really, and the whole reason for that is because Philemon was saved. Amen. Philemon was saved. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, when you get saved, you become a new creature, amen. You become a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things become new. You, be, you get a spiritual outlook uh, on things. You start to look at things through a different uh, uh, a set of eyes, amen, not just the, uh, the, uh, the same old eyes. Now you, you're looking through the eyes of Christ. You're looking through uh, the, uh, the eyes uh, through the word of uh, God and things like that, and you'll see things uh, different, amen. And so uh, Philemon was a, a new creature, amen. And Paul, and so Paul's mentioning all these things uh, because when we get to verse 8, uh, uh, and continuing the uh, passages, uh, we see the real reason that Paul, Paul uh, 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 sent this letter uh, to Philemon because uh, he wants to uh, uh, ask a favor of him uh, concerning uh, someone. So let's just read, read on. So in verse 8, uh, verse 7, he talks about what a refreshing uh, brother he is. Verse 8, he says, Wherefore, uh, though I might be much bold in Christ uh, to enjoin thee that which is convenient, in verse 9, he says, uh, Yet for uh, love's sake, uh, I rather beseech thee. Amen. And so uh, Paul, he's, he, Paul is telling him, he's saying, I'm, I'm beseeching you. That word beseech, I'm begging you. Amen. Uh, I'm uh, beseeching you. I'm not going to enjoin you. Paul's not putting any of his, like, uh, uh, apostolic authority behind what he's asking uh, uh, Philemon. He's, he's just asking him uh, as another Christian, amen, uh, 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 to be kind, you'll see. Uh, and he says in verse 9, uh, Yet for love's sake, uh, I rather beseech thee, being such a, uh, in one as Paul the aged, uh, and now also a prisoner uh, of Jesus Christ. So Paul's in prison, amen. Paul's getting uh, older. In verse 10, he says, and here's the, the, the question. He says, I beseech thee uh, for my son, uh, Onesimus, amen. That's how you pronounce that, Onesimus, uh, whom I have uh, begotten uh, in my bonds. And so uh, uh, Onesimus, if you... Uh, know the story, Onesimus uh, 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 was a, a servant uh, of uh, uh, Philemon, and again, that's how we know Philemon had a big house, he had servants, uh, some Bibles will say they were slaves, uh, uh, and, and God had a, a, a certain laws concerning uh, slaves and uh, things that uh, are different than uh, what we would uh, think uh, uh, when we refer to slaves, but the point is uh, Onesimus uh, stole from Philemon and ran away. And so he stole from Philemon, ran away, ends up in prison, getting witnessed to by Paul. Paul leads him to the Lord. And so now Paul refers to him uh, in verse 10, he says, uh, I beseech thee, I'm begging thee uh, for my son, amen, indicating that he's his son in the Lord. If you lead someone to the Lord, that's your son in the Lord, or that's your daughter in the Lord. You led them uh, to the Lord, amen. Uh, and so he says, I beseech thee uh, for my son Onesimus, uh, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Look at what he says in verse 11. He says, uh, which in time past was to thee unprofitable. And so Paul's re recognizing, he's saying, I know Philemon uh, was unprofitable uh, for you in the past, but then he says, but now profitable to thee uh, and uh, to me, amen, uh, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is my own bowels. He's saying, my, I have the, uh, that deep affection uh, of, of Onesimus. He's, he will, he'll go on and uh, say how Onesimus was helping him in the ministry and things like that. And so he wants Philemon uh, to uh, uh, take him back uh, and be reconciled to him. Amen. Don't treat him so much 
uh, as a, a servant uh, like he was in the past, but now he's a brother in the Lord, and he's there. Uh, he can be profitable to you, and he's profitable uh, to me. And so we see there uh, that uh, reconciliation, amen. And anybody here today that's trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior, you've been reconciled back to God through your relationship with Jesus Christ, amen. The Bible tells us uh, that we were God's enemies uh, before we were saved, that we were separated from God, amen, but that it's through our relationship when we go to Christ and we trust him as our Lord and Savior and our sins get forgiven, Christ reconciles and brings us back uh, into a relationship with God, amen, that, we, uh, that God originally wanted man to have, amen. That's why I like Psalm 23. He restoreth my soul. Amen. He, bring, he restores that relationship that we were supposed to have with God. Amen. Uh, and so uh, Paul is uh, really he's touching on that whole thing uh, with uh, uh, Philemon. And he wants him to, uh, and, and he's doing the right thing. And he said, well, let's read on. He says, in verse 12, he says, Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him. So he's sending Onesimus back to Philemon. Amen. Onesimus had uh, ran away. He had stolen uh, from Philemon. Uh, and then uh, Paul leads him to the Lord. And Paul's saying, you need to make it right. Amen. You need to uh, go back to Philemon. I'm going to send this letter with you. Amen. Uh, you're going back now. You're a new creature in Christ. Amen. You're not the same old Onesimus that stole, amen. You're a new uh, creature. Uh, and he says in verse 13, uh, whom I would have retained with me, that uh, in thy stead uh, he might have ministered unto me in the bonds uh, of the gospel. Uh, but without thy mind would I do nothing uh, that thy benefit uh, should not be as it were of necessity uh, but willing. And then he says uh, in verse 15, for perhaps uh, he therefore departed for a season uh, that thou shouldest receive him uh, forever. Amen. And that's like uh, uh, Romans 8, 28. Amen. All things work together for good. Paul's saying, you know what? Uh, he, uh, uh, he left for a season, but maybe it actually, it worked out for good because he ended up uh, in prison over here. I was able to witness to him. Now he's a Christian. Now he's going to be able to come back to you. He can work for you not only as a, a servant, but as a, a, a fellow Christian, as a brother. So everything's better, amen, uh, than what it was. And, uh, and I tell you what, if you get saved, your life is definitely better than what it was, amen. You may still go through a dark hour. You may still go through a, a trial, amen. Uh, none of us uh, 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 avoid of uh, uh, having health problems or financial problems or whatever, amen, but you're still better off, amen, uh, saved, going through it with God, going through it with other people, going through it with uh, Christians uh, praying for you, amen, and helping you, trying to refresh you, trying to encourage you, then going it alone, amen, uh, and uh, uh, that dark place can just keep getting darker, amen, and darker and darker. Uh, and so uh, he wants uh, uh, Philemon to, to restore and reconcile with Onesimus, uh, but he wants him to do it uh, willingly, amen. Uh, and he wants him to uh, reconcile to him. He wants him to try to see the, uh, the, the, the good side of all of this, amen. In verse 15 again, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou should uh, receive him forever, uh, not now as a servant, uh, but above a servant, amen, uh, a brother uh, beloved, especially to me, but how much more uh, unto thee, both in thy flesh uh, and uh, uh, in the Lord. And so Paul's, uh, uh, again, playing on that thing, you know, uh, this thing actually could work out uh, better, amen, by Lehman's a new creature. Uh, Philemon's been, re been reconciled uh, to God. Uh, now uh, allow him to be reconciled to you, and this thing will just uh, be better uh, for everyone. Amen. And I'm going to look at a verse over in uh, Corinthians that talks about uh, uh, being reconciled 
uh, to God. You know that uh, the Bible uh, tells us that uh, we are ambassadors, amen, uh, for Christ. An ambassador is what? A representative. Uh, we uh, represent uh, him. If you want to look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, uh, verse number 17, Therefore, if any man, any woman, any boy, any girl be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18 says, And all things are of God. Look what it says. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I already had a hit on that, how by our relationship with Christ, we get reconciled back to God. Now you now you have a you're on good terms with God now. Amen. That's a blessing. That's a blessing to me. Amen. There's been times I haven't been on good terms with people, <laughs> but in God, amen. But but since I got saved in my uh, mid twenties, amen. Because of Christ, I'm on good terms with God, not because of myself. Uh, but he goes on. He says, "And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us uh, to Himself by Jesus Christ." Look at what it says, and hath given to us to save people the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. And so we all have that uh, that uh, 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 ministry. Amen. We all have that. A burden where we should try to reconcile uh, others uh, to Christ. In verse 19, it says, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world uh, unto himself, amen, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation, amen. So we have God's authority behind us, the authority of the word of God, that we can reconcile others. You have the authority from God that you can tell someone their sins are forgiven. That's a big deal. Amen? To be able to tell someone, I can tell you how you can have your sins forgiven. That's a big deal. Amen. Jesus got accused of, who is he to tell people they can have their sins forgiven? Remember the Pharisees. And then he'll tell you who he is. He's God in the flesh. Amen. Uh, but now this has been uh, committed unto us, uh, the word of reconciliation. Look what it says in verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. Look at what it says. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. And so we, we speak in Christ's stead. We get to speak for Christ. Christ isn't down here now walking around in sandals witnessing to people amen he gave us the opportunity he gave us the responsibility amen we're responsible for this generation of sinners amen we're responsible for the god don't want you to save everybody just the ones he wants you to save amen? uh the uh people he puts in your fan, in your circle amen in your little bird nest those are the ones you you need to worry about amen uh and so uh we all have that ministry of uh, reconciliation, amen, uh, and we've been uh, reconciled unto God, and so back in Philemon, and so Paul wants Philemon to willingly receive Onesimus back to him, amen, take him back uh, above a servant now, uh, a, a brother, amen, and he'll be profitable, he'll be, he'll be, I tell you what, the Christian should be the best worker in the company, amen, we used to, me and my brother, we both saved, we used to work we, we sold uh, roofing and gutters uh, in Worcester back 30-something years ago. And this guy, he it shows you how the Jewish people can be smart, amen. He knew Christians were good workers. He knew Christians probably didn't drink, probably weren't going to steal from them, were probably going to be come in every morning, were probably going to be dressed halfway. Deep. He knew. He was smart, amen. And Christians should be the best uh, workers, amen. Uh, that a company has. You shouldn't be the one trying to egg everybody on, complaining how cheap the boss is, and uh, uh, complaining about all the working conditions, amen. You should be one of the best uh, workers in the company, amen, because you uh, carry the name uh, of Christ. And so he's asking Philemon to willingly uh, reconcile uh, uh, Onesimus 
uh, back to him. And then he goes on in verse 17, he says, uh, If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him uh, as myself. Look what he says. And if he hath wronged me or oweth thee aught, put that on my account. Amen. And isn't that what Christ did for us? Our sins were put on his account. Amen. Our sins were transferred onto him. Somehow in the uh, mind of God, uh, 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 the sin of the world, past, present, future, were transferred onto the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he got put on that cross, and he was the one who got punished, amen, uh, in our place. And so uh, uh, he says here, if he's done anything wrong, I'll pay you back, amen. I'll pay you back. Uh, and then he goes on and he says, uh, in verse 19, I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. And then he goes on and says, Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest uh, unto me even thine own self besides. Amen. And Paul's like, you know, remember, I'm the one that led you to the Lord. Amen. And you got saved and your life's been blessed and your business has been blessed. And God's blessed you abundantly. Amen. Uh, and so uh, uh, he's just uh, uh, bringing that up. Amen. <laughs> and so and then in verse 20, he says, Yea, brother, uh, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels uh, in the Lord. Amen. Uh, and he says, having confidence in thy obedience. Amen. And so Paul knows, Paul knows why Lehman's a, a good Christian. He knows why Lehman's going to do the right thing. He knows why Lehman's uh, uh, going to uh, handle this uh, situation the uh, right way. And so Paul says he has that uh, confidence in him. Uh, verse 21, having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing uh, that thou wilt also do more uh, than I say. And then in verse 22, he closes, he says, uh, but with all prepare me also a lodging, uh, for I trust that uh, through your prayers uh, I shall be given unto you. So he knew by Lehman, they were, he was praying, he tells us uh, over at the beginning of uh, verses that he was praying in verse 4 for Philemon. He knows over here Philemon uh, is praying uh, for him. Uh, and then he says in verse 23, uh, there salute thee, uh, Epaphras, my uh, fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, uh, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. Uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Uh, amen. And so, uh, again, this just, uh, there's so many uh, 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 good points uh, in this little uh, uh, epistle, amen. And really, if uh, uh, any of us could be a little bit more like Philemon, uh, just uh, being a refresher to the saints, being someone who's uplifting, amen, uh, be uplifting, be an exhorter, be an encourager, amen, be a helper, amen, try to help people. Uh, uh, any way you can, uh, and uh, again, uh, take uh, advantage of the uh, Christmas season, try to use that uh, any way you can uh, to uh, get the gospel uh, to others, and for if you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you need to get saved, amen, that's the bottom line, everybody here has done it, a majority of us have, have uh uh, 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 done it. We've trusted Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's no big deal. You just need to talk to somebody, amen, uh, after church, whether it's a, one of the deacons, me, uh, one of the uh, fine uh, women we have here that can lead uh, someone to the Lord. If you have any questions, please talk to someone. There's no reason anybody should leave here uh, lost today, amen. And then there's no reason that any Christian should leave here today not on good terms with God. Amen. That's why you, the Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so you can stay in fellowship uh, with God. Amen. We're going to take, uh, in a minute, we're going to uh, uh, do the Lord's Supper. And the Lord's Supper is the time where the Bible tells us that you can examine yourself, amen. That's a time when we, when the uh, deacons pass out the, I guess we can come down the front, guys. When the deacons pass out the, uh, the 